So the first track of this independent rap album is about desperately resisting the urge to masturbate. Welcome to Indie Rap Reviews, where if you want to request your music for me to discuss on my main channel, it's now a tier on my Ko-fi page. Hit the link in the description. But I'm telling you guys, my whole thing is that I'm honest about the experience I have with the music I listen to. So please, if you're going to send it in, know for a fact that I'm not going to pull any punches with how I feel about your stuff. I'm going to call it how I see it. And today's indie request is for Help Me Get Through by Late Bloomer. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to hear the music yourself. So for this album, I wanted to organize my thoughts on the experience by going through the best and the worst tracks, starting with the worst and ending on a good note with what I liked. So let's get into the worst with track one, which lays out the premise of the album being about trying not to masturbate. The one main reason I'm attempting to complete this project is so I don't masturbate I've got today. And just on a personal level, it's like, god damn it, I open things up for more indie music and the first thing I get is this. Like, gee, thanks for the imagery. Oh my god, stop making me think about it! But okay, on a certain level, I can understand the starting place of the topic. Uh, laying out how he's trying to be a more disciplined person and practice self-control so he can do more with his time and ultimately his life than just jacking it all day. It's these lines that get into a bit of murky territory. I can't take time, cause first of all it turns my thoughts away To so thirst and wanna hit it, that ain't love, that's just physical Cold realm based level selfish behavior Like, first off, that cheat rhyme with the unfinished word that barely fits the rhyme scheme That, that shit just burns my ears For real though, how you gonna request the rap critic to review something and that's in the first eight bars? Come on son, you know I'm not feeling that but to what he's saying here, it throws me a bit, because it seems like he's saying he doesn't want to jack off to women because doing so makes him not respect them. And this feels like a mental trap a lot of well-meaning dudes fall into, where they think, well, if I jerk off to her, then I'm just treating her like a sexual object. But honestly, that's not something to beat yourself off over. I mean, beat yourself up over. <laughs> But for real, being sexually attracted to a woman enough to jerk it doesn't automatically make you sexist or something. I mean, realistically, if you're the person who's worried masturbating will lead you to be a he-man woman hater, you're probably already the type of person who isn't that. No, the thing that makes you a jerk in most women's eyes is if you pursue a girl, she expresses disinterest, and you try to advance on her anyways. That's what materially matters. So as long as you don't act pushy or like you're entitled to sex with them, playing out sexual fantasies in your head while you happen to be yanking it, that isn't automatically pulling you down some misogyny rabbit hole. Okay, well, now, now that we've had that life lesson, let's get to the rest of the material. So, moving on, there's two songs on here that have cool, catchy, bouncy hooks, but no verses. And it kind of throws you off because they're back-to-back -back songs on a rap album. And like I said, they're great songs that sound good, but when there's two songs in a row on a rap album with no verses on them, it, it kind of comes off like you forgot to record them. And while I don't mind super short songs, some of the other songs with rap verses will have like one eight bar verse that was clearly freestyled and as a whole maybe has like one or two clever lyrics. So people can see how I rise, better yet see how I race, even better see how I roam. Like, what is this other than filler material? Some of these bars are just so loose and lyrically middling, they feel like mini interludes between waiting for a song that, you know, actually sounds like it took some time to write. Then there's the conspiracy song. And you know, I, I wanted to give the benefit of the doubt at first, right? After all, there are often details that come to light about how rich evil bastards grease the wheels behind the scenes to maximize the profits, yeah? The secret society's running the world right now. But see, that's just the thing, it's not actually a secret who runs the globe. It's literally just the owners of the top 100 companies in the world who abuse workers and resources but don't have to answer to anyone because they just pay off the corrupt politicians. It's really not that deep. Have you ever heard of Bill Cooper? He predicted 9-11 months before it happened. So I decided to look this guy up because I wanted to see if, hey, maybe he's some dude who was actually speaking some truth to power about social injustice. And the first thing I found is that his book copied a chapter from another book that rebranded a conspiracy about aliens to be about Jewish people so it would catch on by stoking people's anti-Semitic prejudices. Fantastic. He predicted 9-11 months before it happened. Yeah, the thing about that is that it's total bullshit, though. Like, even the Reddit conspiracy theory boards I went to, just to double-check what folks were saying, had to admit he never mentioned the date of the attack or anything about airplanes or the Twin Towers. He just said that Osama bin Laden, an already well-known terrorist, was gonna do a terrorism. How much of a prediction is that? You might as well believe Simpsons episodes are predicting the future. At least they got a president, right? God, please let the first female president be named Lisa, who has a brother that talks her into legalizing pot everywhere! But yeah, while I hate to drag someone's beliefs like this when they're making a request, when I can find this info within a 15 minute Google search session, at some point I have to take you as someone who just already wanted to believe a conspiracy before they did any real discerning research. And it brings me back to my point. Why, why do we have to act like the evils in the world are any bigger than greedy rich assholes? 
Why can't that simple reality be enough for some people? Most conspiracy theories that are legit are just wealthy people covering their tracks. And seriously, what sounds more plausible? A cabal of Jewish lizard people trying to cook the earth to prepare it to be eaten by Galactus the Space Titan? Or a bunch of wealthy douchebags with no oversight messing up the world who know they can always run to their apocalypse-proof bunkers as soon as shit gets bad? It's Occam's Razor, man. What do you think is more likely? I'm just saying, if everything's really being just so tightly controlled by the evil wizard lizards, how the hell did you, an average person, find out about it? He was murdered in November, I'll save you so you remember. By the way, when I heard this line, I thought it was maybe some Fred Hampton type deal where he was ambushed unprovoked or something. But nope, he spent years evading taxes and, instead of lying low, got belligerent with some local residents while brandishing a deadly weapon, which got the cops called on him, whom he initiated a shootout with by popping a cop in the head first and proclaiming that he refused to be taken alive. S so is that what you wanted us to remember? An anti-Semitic conspiracy theorist who thought aliens killed JFK and was too stupid to keep his head down when he was wanted by the cops? I mean, okay. Well, now that we got through the worst, uh, let's go through the positives. First off, I think he has a pretty cool laid-back vocal delivery that makes a lot of the tracks easy enough to take in for the most part. And it's used especially well on a song called Instant Karma that I thought was really good. It's about a time he felt he was too mean to a person whose music he was critiquing. I made a comment on this dude's beat page. I said I checked some of them out, nothing was wild. I wrote I hate your drums, how they sound and how they're programmed. And I can't help but feel like he's trying to tell me something with this. But yeah, it's just a short story of how he felt like he got instant payback for his jerkish behavior online. When I woke, my body felt stiff. I had to move slow. The thought came to me, this is karma for what I wrote. So that was a bit of a nice joint. Then he has one about how he thinks aliens are real and created human life. I think we were created by aliens, maybe the aliens and the number of other species. And you know, I can enjoy it on its own as a joint because speculating on our creation as human beings is what we do. Hey, I get that. None of us were there when it happened, so the imagination wonders. But it does hit a little awkward after, you know, the whole shouting out the guy who thinks aliens killed JFK thing. However, the last song is a legit unmitigated banger. And I can't recall what sample this is, but but he rides it pretty damn well. And while he does mention jacking it again, twenty-one straight days resisted for eighteen. It's actually kind of respectable how he lays it out, illustrating how even though he might have failed one or two times at his goal of not jerking it the whole twenty-one days, he still counts it towards his perseverance that he did his best and was willing to get back on task after messing up. But my perfectionism is fading as long as I put forth the effort. I and I gotta say, I like that as a message. That it's not about being automatically perfect at something on your first try, it's about having the impetus to improve yourself and willingness to get back up when you fall. So overall, I give the project a 2 out of 5. For an indie cat, there's pretty consistently strong delivery and production from track to track, but it's the actual lyrics, topics, and song structures that are just so frequently wonky and incomplete feeling, it, it makes for a constantly frustrating listen. Well, that's the episode. And hey, by the time you see this episode live, the next episode will already be available for patrons, so if you want to catch it early, head on over to patreon.com slash rapcritic and get access to that, plus exclusive episodes of my movie podcast and the Patreon RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. Can't do that? That's cool. If you enjoy my stuff and you want to support, leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell because that's what helps the most. So until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but you know, sometimes I just feel kind of mid about your songs. You know, I, I'm sorry. All right, peace.